Hey everyone, I'm here with Professor Katie Finch, soon to be Dr. Katie Finch. One of these days. It's gonna happen. I'll hope for it. Under threat of death. It's true. This you is why we're still in school. Yeah, by my advisors <laughs> and others, so working on it. But Katie is teaching a class this fall called Feminist Theology. We want to make sure you knew about it. This was yeah. one of my probably top three favorite classes yeah. that I took in my master's. It's a total perspective changer. And when you hear feminist theology, you might think like calling God mother and burning your bras. <laughs> right? Just totally out there stuff. Yeah, people people probably think about that. You know, the, the burning the bra thing where it didn't actually happen. It didn't happen. No. It's totally a myth. Yeah. And you would know that if you took this class. That's true. That's true. But, um, so Candy, this is one of those classes that, um, it's so relevant because if you know the big things happening in our culture today, like DOMA, the death of DOMA, um, abortion debate is ongoing. Here in Texas, we just had this huge bill passed that was incredibly debated hugely protesting. All of those things really, though, are gender issues. They come down to issues of uh, womanhood, manhood, what is a woman, what is a woman's body, and all of those things really come down to feminist theology, don't they? How have we been affected and we don't even realize it? Yeah, well, you, you have to understand when you're talking about feminism, uh, it's a movement, a secular movement, and we'll talk about that in the class. The first half is really kind of a history of feminism, and and so there's this secular movement that we talk about that had three waves, mm -hmm. and so the first wave started back when, when in the 1800s, women were fighting for the right to vote, mm -hmm. and uh, but not just that, they were also fighting for like child labor law protection, uh, marriage protections, and and different things like that, abolition. Good uh, things. Yeah, good things. Stuff that, that we would fight for. Yeah, that I would think that are really beneficial <laughs> things that I wish more Christians were speaking out. Yeah. Now Christians were, but um, we really see that feminists, early feminists in the first way were fighting for that. And so that had an influence. But when you think about that, some of the things you were talking about, in that first wave of feminism, there's a woman named Margaret Sanger mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who uh, wrote a book called Women in the New Race and her ideas influenced the way we talk about women's bodies and health issues. She actually planted the seed writing that book like in, in 1919. Uh, she was eventually the founder of Planned Parenthood. She's the one who dreamed up this magic pill. Magic pill, birth control pill. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so it was the, the movers and shakers of this movement that really are impacting our culture today. Mm -hmm. As you move into the second wave of feminism, you see that as well in the 1960s when we see a real uh, kind of explosion of ideas. Yeah, the whole cultural wave of feminism yeah. it infiltrated everything, Yeah, really. Yeah. So it's infiltrated the academy, all of our schools. I think it's like required in a lot of classes that even men have to take now feminism, feminist classes, isn't it? Well, actually, in a lot of state universities, uh, depending on your major, you will have to take a women's studies class, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of at secular universities, women's studies classes are heavily influenced by feminism. So wow. if you're sociology, mm -hmm. you know, communication, it, it depends on each university has their own requirements. So. This really isn't just sort of a fringe movement. It's kind of steeped into our whole cultural identity in a lot of ways in America. It's very much a worldview. Oh, it? sure, sure. So it's not only a movement, but there's also a message behind the movement. Hmm. And um, that that is very yeah. counterintuitive or against what the, the Bible says because the Bible says we're all sinners and the movement of feminism uh, really kind of raises women um, to to a status that we aren't, that, that we are noble and that we have all good intentions and we don't. And so the, the, the message behind feminism is really damaging. It's really damaged a lot of women. No, it's true. It's damaged women. It's damaged families. Um, but but so much of it, as extreme as it is, there's there's also that little kernel of truth, and that's where it seems like we have to have discernment. We have to be able to get in and dig into the arguments, and uh, we got to read them for what they said. It's really easy to pick up a book and hear about like oh feminist slamming, um, all of these crazy left wingers, but when you read what they say, so much of it is actually really, really well reasoned. So is that some of the stuff that you're doing in your class too? Yeah, and I, just to be perfectly honest, I I hate when people talk about something that they've never read, that you know, 
or had any exposure to. Mm -hmm. So part of what I want to do through this class is make people read the primary sources, mm -hmm. you know, the books that really shaped this movement. They will have to read them in the class. So like Betty Friedan's Feminine Mystique, which launched the second wave of secular mm -hmm. feminism, they'll have to read that. And then, and then as we move to talking about not only secular feminism, but also religious feminism, Christian feminism, mm -hmm. it's, it's a broad umbrella of what will well, the scope of what we talk about in the class, uh, but we'll look at those those women who are suggesting that we call God mother. Mm -hmm. But not every Christian feminist goes to that extreme okay. there, and so we'll read this the spectrum of that and have discussions. So we'll it's not just what I am saying about what these women or men believed, mm -hmm. but you're actually reading the primary sources and understanding. Uh, it's not just what. Professor Finch says, or her interpretation of it, but you have to read the sources yourself and be discerning. And and I hope by doing this, because I think this class is a little different. We'll spend the semester reading things that we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I think the majority of people that take the class, you're not going to agree with everything they say. Now, uh, there, like it, like we said before, there's some good things that have come out of feminism. I mean, I am reaping the benefits of women that fought for like theological education. For yeah, women. yeah, figure, right? Yeah, that, that we get to yeah. have an education that women are capable of mm -hmm. prior learning. I'm thankful that someone fought for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but because we'll be doing that, oh, I want them to be able to talk about and engage with ideas that they're not going to agree with and learn how to talk about that in a way that honors Christ. Because I think we demonize a movement yeah. when we don't fully understand it. I yeah. think we should be discerning about this movement, know how to talk about it as if, you know, Betty Friedan was sitting, she couldn't because she's not sitting longer, but if, if she was sitting across the table to be able to discuss the ideas in a way that that's intelligent, mm -hmm. but also discerning. So. Awesome. And really how the gospel and how Jesus is the answer to all of the things that they were trying to accomplish. Yeah. And without him, you just see how it went so completely awry. It's yeah. like they saw real problems, but without Christ, it just, it went off the deep end. Yeah. Um, so what kind of woman is this class for? It's not necessarily, you don't have to be a women's studies major to take this. What kind of woman would really benefit from this class? I'm biased. I think any woman in seminary would benefit from taking this class because I, I tell this story early in the semester, but I, when I was in college at a secular university, I really started reading a lot of secular feminism because of a class that I took and someone kind of challenged my beliefs mm -hmm. about Christianity and challenged me to read feminism. And so I did. I started reading secular feminism and it was mind blowing. And I thought, Ooh, maybe I agree with some of this stuff. And you know, in Christian circles, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but feminism is kind of like the other F word, and so you may need to edit that. Nope, that's but staying in. The, that was that's, great. That's what people, well, that's that's kind of what it's been called. It's true, it's true. It's like a bad word in yeah. Christian cultures. Yeah. And so, so in understanding and reading that, I was like, oh, I don't know what to do with this because we don't talk about this in church. It's just yeah. something we disagree with, we don't talk about, and we don't want to understand because it's evil. And there are some really damaging things about the feminist movement and the message of feminism. However, when I started really looking at this movement and understanding how it affected me as a woman, the way I think about so many issues on a daily basis, I was like, wow, I have really uh, kind of you know, imbibed upon this message without even realizing it, without even comparing to what the Bible says about this. And so I think it's really for anyone. I don't, I don't care if you're going to be a, a missionary, if you're going to be a, on a church staff, if you're going to be in schools, working at a, a clinic, whatever area of scope of ministry the Lord will have you, if you're going to be home, teaching your children at home, whatever that would be, I think because this is a cultural movement that has forever altered the way we think about things like home and family and what it means to be a woman, these are important things for us to, to have a right understanding about. The Bible says that we need to be able to discern the times. And this is part about understanding our times. I don't know if I'm talking too much, but I think no, about it right. like, if we were going, if you we were going to go overseas and do mission work, you would have a want to understand the culture in mm -hmm. which you are doing ministry. In the same way, you can't, I, I think, you will not be as effective as you could be doing ministry here in America without understanding this movement that has forever changed our culture yeah. and impacted our culture. So, I, like I said, I'm biased. I, I Other than biblical theology of womanhood, which I love, just really digging into the scripture, I think this class really impacts women because we're looking 
you know, if you have the biblical foundation, now we need to understand how that biblical foundation has been challenged and is challenged and is under attack on a daily basis in our culture today. So. Wonderful. Well, the class is Feminist Theology. Professor Candy Finch is teaching it, and it is uh, Wednesdays and Fridays from 1 to 2.15 p.m., and if you go to register for it, it's W-O-M-S-T for Women's Studies, 4023. Actually, no, 4103. Four one I don't know what it zero is. Three. Thank you so much, soon to be Dr. Finch, for sitting down and telling no us more about this class and stuff that you're so passionate about. It really will change the way you see yourself, your church, your world, your family, uh, really your whole life. So thanks so much for listening. Wow. And we'll see you later. Whole life.